Good morning. Welcome to SGTV. It is Sunday, May 2nd, and I am Deaconess Benita Hampton. We are the Shady Grove number one church under the dynamic leadership of Elder Lenoris D. McFadden. We are so excited that you have joined the City of Victory for our virtual worship experience. Pastor Mac, Lady E, and the entire church family, thank you for choosing to worship with us today. Our vision is to build a Christ-centered community of believers focused on fulfilling the biblical mandate to embrace God, equip people, and empower the kingdom of God, all for the glory of God. Here at the City of Victory, we are called to do more, rooted in Matthew 28, 19 through 20, John, and John 14, 12. More, ministry, outreach, relationship, and empowerment. Our theme for the year 2021 is refocus, seeing God clearly. Our theme scripture is Mark 8, 25. Then he put his hands on his eyes again, and the man looked intently, that is, fixed his eyes on definite objects, and he was restored and saw everything distinctly, even what was at a distance. Refocus on relationships, expectations, finance, obedience, order, children, and youth, capacity, unity, sharpness. This month's emphasis is finance, stewardship, tithing, giving, entrepreneurship, wealth planning, and management. I have just a few more minutes to share with you the great things that are happening at SG1 Church. But first, we're going to hear from one of the City of Victory citizens. Hello, Shady Grove family and friends. We are the gardeners. We were just checking in to see how everyone was doing, how everyone was faring, and to let you all know that we are thinking of you, we are praying for you, and we just love you. We hope to see you all very soon. So until then, know that we love you and maintain victory. We'd like to take a moment to wish a happy birthday to SG1 members born this month. May your day be blessed with many returns. We received a thank you note from Sister Joshonda Jackson. God used your kindness to remind me of his faithfulness. Thank you. On behalf of the Jackson family, we want to thank each member of the Shady Grove family for your thoughts and prayers during our time of sorrow. We love each and every one of you. Join the prayer call every Wednesday at 6.30 a.m. by dialing 605-472-5462, access code 862-718-POUND. Wednesday night is also Bible study at 7 p.m., a time for inspiration and information. The SG1 Church and Victory House CRC, in collaboration with the Department of Health, and the Department of Emergency Management will host a vaccine clinic at the Victory House on Saturday, May 8, 2021, from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Both the Pfizer and Moderna vaccine, first or second doses, will be administered. Please spread the word. You may text or call Dr. Mary Simmons at 850-264-7164 for an appointment or you can just walk up. Saturday, May 8th, from 8 a.m. to 10, p 10 a.m., the WWW Outreach will host its food distribution event in partnership with the Victory House Community Resource Center. The Youth and Young Adult Ministry invites parents to save the following dates. On May 19th, Youth on the Prayer Line. We are seeking four to six youth prayer warriors. May 26th, Youth Sunday, volunteers are needed for prayer, offering affirmation, and scripture. Contact Mother Gaines if you would like for your youth to participate. May 19th, Youth and Young Adults, core group check-in at 6.30 p.m. May 21st, from 7 to 8 p.m., Singles Ministry Meet and Greet will be on Zoom. The ID is 561 356 
7933 and the password is 968-945. Have you visited the SG-1 Winter Circle Bookstore? Our hours of operation are the first Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. There are lots of great items like SG-1 wristbands, water bottles, and face masks. Bible study series books, Pastor Max CDs, Donnell Davis's CDs, and so much more. You can also visit our website, www.sg1church.org, to view and purchase these items and more. Contact Sister Ambriel Bree Turner at Ambriel Turner at yahoo.com if you have any questions. Worship through giving is a powerful moment in our service here at SG1. We have many ways of giving, Givelify, PayPal, Cash App. You may also visit our website at www.sg1church.org or mail your gifts to 1478 Chairs Cross Road, Tallahassee, Florida, 32317. Your financial support is greatly appreciated by the leadership of this ministry. There have been many testimonies to the power of giving, and we want to encourage you to continue to sow your seeds, and we pray that your harvest is bountiful. Our main deacons on call are Deacon Nick Herring and Deacon Angelo Barker. They can be reached at sg1deacons at gmail.com or 850 583 7977. Last month, we celebrated Easter with a soul stirring message from Pastor Mac. I expect a resurrection. Prophetically, he told us that after a year of this pandemic, Jesus might not be where you left him. God is not bringing us back to church as usual. With that in mind, surrender your hearts and minds to the move of God today. As we prepare for today's service, let us keep in mind that Jesus paid it all, and we owe all to him. Praise the Lord. And until next time, be blessed and maintain victory. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Anybody else here glad to be in this day that the Lord has made? You know it was nobody but Jesus. Hallelujah. That brought you through all of last week. Issues, trials, struggle, tribulation, some laughter, some tears, some sadness. Come on, we greet you this morning Jesus, in Jesus. the name of our Lord and Savior, Hallelujah. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Welcome, Facebook. Hallelujah. Welcome, YouTube. Hallelujah. We welcome you today Hallelujah. to our E-Church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Celebration on today, the yeah. first Sunday. Hallelujah. And this Jesus. month, a new month, the month of May. Hallelujah. Are you glad? Hallelujah. Come on, this is the time to like, share. Go ahead on and share this post. So somebody, somebody, wake up your household. Tell them to come on out the kitchen. Get on up out the bed. Sit up. Don't lay down on this moment. Let's sit up and praise God in this place. Whatever the place is that you're in, you've got to surrender your all to him. You have got to command your day. You've got to command this moment. If you don't feel like it, have a I don't feel like it type of praise. Have a I'm going to praise him anyhow. I'm tired. I'm fed up. I'm frustrated. I'm a little angry. My back hurting. I'm sleeping. But through it all, Jesus. 
Hallelujah, God. We serve an awesome God in this place. And so now that you feel welcome, now that you know you've been invited, we encourage you throughout this service on today. Don't just be a spectator, even in your living room. Stand up and clap your hands. Turn around and do a dance. Tell God, thank you. Don't worry about what's happening in this sanctuary. Worry about this sanctuary. Hallelujah. Let the redeemed of the Lord. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I can't hear you. Are you typing in? I need to know. That on today, I'm amongst the land of the living. Ha. Hallelujah. Somebody, everybody, anybody, yes. scream for Jesus yes. on today. Say hallelujah. Oh, no. moment. Amen. Hallelujah, God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you excited Hallelujah, to be in the God. house of the Lord? Yes. Hallelujah. If Hallelujah. you can, we're yeah, back in the yeah. sanctuary. Can you stand up on your feet? Can you stand bless up on God. your feet? Bless can you God. open up your mouth and begin Hallelujah. to bless him? Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. He's so worthy. Come on, put a smile on your face like you're excited to be here. I can't see you. But I trust that you're smiling. We love you. We're glad to see you back in the sanctuary. Hallelujah. I love this. It just says, bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. No other name. I love 
my Savior. Come on, lift your voice and sing, my Savior, my Savior. Come on, let's read it up. Sing, my Savior, my Savior, my Savior. Nobody like you. Sing, my Savior, my Savior. Come on, sing, way maker, way maker, way maker. Come on and sing, way maker, way maker, way maker. They call this name. Jesus. Come on, it's simple. Jesus. All in Jesus. Come on, lift this name. Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Everyone that needs to be saved, call his name. Everyone that needs deliverance, call his name. Everyone that needs a healing, call his name. Everyone that needs provision, call his name. Come on, somebody shout, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, shout Jesus, Jesus. Can you lift your voice and say Jesus? Lift your voice and say Jesus. Come on. The only name that saves. The only name that heals. The only Somebody call Jesus. Jesus. 
Come on, lift your voice. Somebody call Jesus. Somebody call Jesus. Jesus. Like you really need him. Call Jesus. Why did your house lift the night tech? Jesus. 
voices. Somebody call him. Somebody call him. Jesus. Somebody call him like you need. Jesus. Somebody call him like you're desperate. Jesus. Say somebody call him. Jesus. Somebody call him. Jesus. He's a way maker. Miracle worker, Jesus. He's a promise keeper, yes. Jesus. Anybody know he's a light in the darkness, yes. Jesus. He can turn it around, yes. He can. Jesus. He can turn it around, yes. He can. Jesus. He can turn it around, yes. He can. He can turn it around, yes he can. Jesus. He can heal what the doctor says is incurable. I heard a songwriter say, God specializes in things that seem impossible. Jesus. I heard him say, God specializes. Come on. Somebody call Jesus. Jesus. I gotta preach on. Somebody call Jesus. Jesus. You've been calling family. You've been calling friends. You've been calling pastor. You've been calling your deacon. Somebody call Jesus. Somebody call Jesus. Jesus. I know I got the microphone and everybody's got a testimony, but my mind often goes. Back to October 2002. Driving on I 95 in Boca Raton, Florida. Tire blew out. Ford Explorer. And the truck began to flip. The police report said seven times. I wouldn't count. Truck begin to flip seven times. One day I'm gonna show y'all pictures. I was in the passenger seat, and the most impact was on my side. I was sitting upright, but the roof of the car was smashed in completely on that side. Jesus. Threw one of the people out of the vehicle. But I'm here to tell you all these years later that we are all living. Yes, God. Yeah. We all survive. Jesus. I limp every now and then because I got three screws in my knee, but that's all right. Folk, most folk can't tell because I'm a Jesus. crazy Jesus. man. Uh -oh. Jesus. Jesus. Come on. I'm a yes. crazy him anyway. But hold on. I got you to the end of the story, but I need to tell you something that was happening in the flips. Oh, my. Come on. In the flips, Alton, I didn't have time to say, kind father in the name of Jesus. Oh. I didn't have time to say, oh, thou who rulest it. I didn't have time, big and average, to go through all that in the midst of. In the heat of the moment, all I could think to say was Jesus, Jesus. So I just took a, a selfish moment, told my testimony, but won't you just release yours in the atmosphere or tell somebody there at your house or wherever you are watching this, tell somebody who brought you out, huh? who brought you through, huh? who brought you over, huh? who covered you, huh? who made a way for you, huh? who brought you out, huh? who provided for you, huh? God Almighty, somebody call this name.
We believe you by faith. We believe you because we've seen you do it so many times before. And so God is easy for us to put our trust in you. Because you've never let us down before. So God, before we move any further in this prayer, this service, yes, Lord. we pause to say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come on, somebody lift up your voice and tell them thank you. Thank you, thank you Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your grace, for your mercy, for yes. your kindness. Thank you, Lord. We put everything in your hands now. We claim it all done in the name of Jesus. We thank you right now for miracles, for signs and for wonders. Shall follow this word and give you the glory, honor, and praise. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen in the heavens. Amen in the earth. Just before you take your seats, let's let's look at Philippians chapter four. All right. Yes. Yes, sir. As we're preparing to go into this finance focus yes, uh -huh. in our time of refocusing yeah. in the month of May is uh -huh. our finances. Mm -hmm. yes, Genesis chapter 22 more so, but I'm going to give you this, uh -huh. Philippians chapter 4, this, this, uh, Pam, Ray, Mary, Ro, this is uh, a good strategy for when you have two sons. speak in regard to need for I have learned in whatever state I am mm -hmm. yes. to be content. Yes, sir. Yes. I know how to be abased. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And, abound. and I know how to abound. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everywhere mm -hmm. and in all things I have learned both to be full yes. Yes. and to be hungry. Yes, uh -huh. Both to abound mm -hmm. and to suffer need. Uh -huh. I can uh -huh. do all things received from Euphrodite the thing sent from you a sweet smelling aroma an acceptable sacrifice well pleasing to God this is the people of God sowing into the man of God and so I want to pause in this moment and say thank you to the SG1 church on behalf of my 
myself and my family. Thank you for your love gifts, for your seeds, for your sacrifices, for your kind words um, during this fourth anniversary celebration. Thank you to all, to Dr. Simmons and the pastoral care team, to our deacons and leaders and all that did everything possible uh, uh, to make sure So Paul is talking about that, and then he says, it's not about me. It's not about what you gave to me. He says, because I've learned in whatever situation I'm in uh -huh. to be content. That's it. That's it. Whether I abase or abound, yes, I have learned to be content. Mm -hmm. That's the part about the pastor, about the man of God. He says, I'm not doing it uh, uh, for, for the gift. Right. He says, but for the fruit that you receive. From giving, and then now here's here's the part that I want to anchor on, verse 19, and then we're going over to Genesis. And my God shall supply yes. all whose need, your need, according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. He said, when you have done what you can do for the men and women of God. He says, my God shall supply your needs according to his riches in glory. So I'm going to preach in Genesis chapter 22, but I just want to pronounce the blessings of the Lord over the SG1 family. I dare you even at your house or right here in the sanctuary, lift up your hand and receive the blessing of the Lord. He's going to supply your need according to his riches in glory. Oh, good God Almighty, it doesn't matter if you gave a thousand dollars. It doesn't matter if you sold fifty dollars. It doesn't matter if you sold kind words. He said, according to his riches in glory, I'm going to supply your needs. And so I decree and declare over the citizens of SG1, no lack. I decree and declare prosperity over your life now in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare blessings upon your seed. Your children's children shall be blessed in the name of Jesus. I decree now overflow and abundance in your life. Let it not just show up as money, but let it show up as favor. Let it show up as protection. Let it show up as provision for your children as they're getting ready to go to college. Let it show up as scholarships. Let it show up as favor now in the name of Jesus. Let it show up as healing. Good God Almighty, in the name of Jesus and in God. We do thank you for the money. We do thank you for the finance. We do thank you, God, that every bill is paid now in the name of Jesus. That we can not just pay the balance, we can pay the balance and store some for the future. Thank you, God, that wealth and riches are hitting our homes now. In the name of Jesus, we decree it and declare it for every gift, for every seed sown. In the name of Jesus, we call forth by the power of the Holy Ghost dreams and visions. We call forth by the power of the Holy Ghost favor for the business plan in the name of Jesus. I see you business owners. The Lord says as you have sown into the man and woman of God, I'm going to open up doors beyond PPP money. I'm going to give you money that the government don't have. In the name of Jesus, somebody ought to receive it here. In the name of Jesus, And while we're decreeing and declaring for money, Lord, we pray for money management. Lord, teach us how to budget. Lord, teach us how to save. Lord, teach us about insurance. Lord, teach us to leave an inheritance. In the name of Jesus, we bind now the mindset of poverty that tells us to hold on. And we release now the mindset of prosperity that says there's more than enough, not because of our skills, not because of our jobs, not because of our titles, but because he's Jehovah Jireh, and because he is El Shaddai, the God that's more than...
we call it done now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody shout amen in the heaven. Amen in the earth. Genesis chapter 22. You may be seated. Genesis chapter 22. Thank you, worshipers. Thank you to our faithful usher servant. Thank you so much. Genesis chapter 22. shall be provided. I want to talk on the subject, let God provide. Let God provide. As we are in this season at the SG1 church and our family and friends of refocusing Is for finance, dealing with finance. Many times this is a taboo subject in church, uh, dealing with finance. Uh, but those of us of the kingdom of God understand that this is a necessary part uh, of our Christian walk, uh, the finances of God. And so I just want to look at it from this perspective today, we'll be doing some things. You don't want to miss Bible study during, during this season. We're going to be partnering with our director of finance, Sister Rashada Turner, and she's going to be walking us through uh, some of the practical steps. If you remember the finance pillar we did, I believe two years ago, um, uh, she walked us through some things on the practical side, and she's going to uh, um, flow in that area in her own way. And I don't want you to miss out on that want you to miss out on these spiritual nuggets uh, as well. Uh, but let God, let God provide. Um, one thing we know about God is that we cannot insist that he does anything. We cannot insist that God provides for us, but we can assist him in providing. We cannot make him do anything, but he gives us uh, strategies. He gives us uh, 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 systems, biblical systems uh, that we can adhere to to assist him in providing. Uh, or on the other end of the continuum, we can uh, not uh, yield to those systems and prevent him from providing. Uh, come on, church. Uh, um, how then, Pastor G, we assist God in providing for us? How do we assist him in providing for us? Uh, uh, the first thing that you got to know is you got to learn how to subscribe and submit to God's request in your life. Uh, uh, um, you cannot make up your own way. God Almighty, you cannot make up your own religion, uh, uh, your own systems of how you think things ought to go. Uh, uh, God has already given us uh, what is necessary. What we must do is humble ourselves and submit to it. Uh, uh, here in Genesis chapter 22, uh, we find Abraham, look 
here at verse 1. Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and here it is, he said, here am I. <laughs> he said, here I am. Uh, 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 then he said, y'all see that? Let's stop there. Uh, uh, now it came to pass, verse 1, now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and he called him by name. He says, Abraham, Abraham says, here I am. After Abraham says, here I am, then God begins to speak uh, and give the instructions. Uh, church of God, we've got to learn how to submit ourselves to God. We've got to learn how uh, to say, yes, Lord. Uh, we've got to, we, we, we're going to need, if we're going to assist God in providing for us, we're going to need a here I am kind of mindset. Uh, I can't hear the church. <clears throat> we're going to need a here I am kind of mindset. Uh, um, sometimes we call it a yes, Lord, a yes, Lord, in our spirit uh, that helps us recognize his voice when he is calling us. How do we recognize his voice? It's through relationship. Uh, it's through fellowship. Uh, he says, my sheep. Uh, they know my voice. Good God Almighty. When uh, God called Abraham because Abraham had been in fellowship with God, he was able to say, here I am. Mm. Oh, good God Almighty. You just got to check yourself and see if you have been in fellowship with God. Uh, and this pandemic certainly helps us because some people had it twisted before them that being in fellowship with God meant being in the sanctuary. Uh, but we have learned over all these months, I've lost track, we have learned over all these months uh, that being in fellowship with God uh, really doesn't require us uh, being in this sanctuary, uh, but yet more so in his presence. Oh, good God Almighty, uh, uh, when you're in the presence of God, uh, uh, you begin to familiarize yourself uh, with God's characteristics. Uh, you familiarize yourself uh, with his voice uh, and with his way uh, so that when he speaks to you, you are clear that God spoke. I'm going to have to cut this off because I'm going somewhere. Uh, when he speaks, if you've been in relationship with him, uh, 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 you know the voice of God. Uh, and likewise, uh, you know uh, when it's not the voice of God. You don't have to get in a demon busting and knowing all the names of the demons and all that kind of stuff. But all you need to know is what I just heard uh, was not the voice of God. Uh, because that will have you moving uh, in ways uh, that will get you off track. Uh, and that will get you out of place. We'll talk about it in a minute. But when you are in relationship with him, you can recognize his voice. And when he says, Abraham... <laughs> The pastor told us last week, my good friend, big brother, Dr. Phillips, told us last week that God was calling our name. Uh, oh, good God, it'll be a sad thing for him to call your name when you not recognize his voice. Uh, when you've been in relationship with him, uh, he says, Abraham, uh, and your response is, here I am. <laughs> good God Almighty, good God Almighty. Uh, moving for Abraham, it was being willing. To bring his mind to the place of partnership with God. How do we assist God in providing for us? We have to, like Abraham, bring our minds into subjection and be willing uh, to be in partnership with God. Uh, uh, okay, so now Abraham uh, answers God. Here I am, verse 2. God begins to speak. Then he, capital he, said, Take now your son, your only son Isaac, 
whom you love and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. Uh, uh, so Abraham rose early in the morning. We'll come back to it. Now God gives him an assignment uh, to get ready to sacrifice what he has worked so hard for, what he has been praying about, uh, the promise that God gave him uh, in his old age, God now says, uh, I need you to sacrifice this. Uh, uh, and this requires saints of God. I don't know, I don't care how long you've been saved or been in church. This requires obedience. Uh, this requires a, a partnership with God. And I don't know about y'all. I got the microphone, so let me just talk about me. Sometimes when God gives me an assignment or when God gives me instructions, it doesn't always look like what Matt wants to do. It doesn't always align with how Mac wants to do it. Uh, 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 and, 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 and sometimes it requires, uh, not sometimes, every time, it requires a humbling. Uh, it requires a shattering of our own will uh, and a yes to the will of God. I'm going to try to preach in a minute if y'all just give me a little strength here. Uh, uh, as it relates uh, uh, to to giving as it relates to finance. We have to be willing to give what we have worked hard for in partnership with God. <laughs> Not as an enemy of God. Uh, sometimes we feel like, y'all look straight through here, sometimes we feel like we control our money. <laughs> because I work for it. Y'all know, I got the mic, I just talk how I talk. Because I work for it. <laughs> it's my money. I can control it. I can do what I want to do. I can do what I, I can do what I don't want to do. It's my money. I can control it. But when we really pull it and when we really analyze uh, the source, we understand uh, that we couldn't work enough uh, for God to give us the things that we have. Uh, we realize uh, that we can't clock in enough hours uh, for God to give us the things that we have. We thank God for our paycheck. Lord, please don't cut them off. But if you did, uh, I understand that you are really my source. That's just a resource. So when he asks me to give 10% of it, huh, good God Almighty, I have to preach that a little bit later. I'll dig in that tithing again a little bit later. But when he asks me to give 10% of it, huh, I can't act like this my money. Because let me tell you something from Mac experience. I can't talk about nobody else. Huh, from Mac experience, you can withhold it if you want to. When I tell you God's going to get his tithe one way or another, huh, you either going to give it to him or you're going to give it to the tire man to repair on your car. You're going to give it to your children. Had to go on this trip. You're going to give it. I got no church here. I have no church listening. But if we're going to, uh, if we're going to assist God in providing for us, we've got to have this Abraham kind of mindset huh, where we sacrifice uh, willingly uh, in partnership with God the things that we have worked hard for. Uh, let me help you. Let me help you. And I'll just have to cut this off. Y'all cut me off when it's time. Uh, uh, let me help you. Uh, let me help you. Let me help you. You cannot give based on man. Good God, I might have stopped giving a long time ago. You can't give based on the pastor. And I'm talking to everybody at SG1 and outside. You can't give based on what you think the deacons are doing or not doing. Come on, it's all right. My truck will crank long enough for the day. If you cannot give because certain people do what you want them to do or don't do and things like that. If you sow in the flesh, you will of the flesh reap corruption. 
But if you learn how to look past the people, and so don't look at nobody else. Look at just look straight. We, nobody don't know we talk. Just look straight. You got to learn how to sow in the spirit. Because whether whether Pastor Mac is in this pulpit or some other pastor is in this pulpit. Whether these deacons are serving or we fast forward and some other deacons are serving, it's not going to matter. What does matter is that you learn how to be in partnership with the God that has brought you this far. What I learned to do, what I learned to do, what I learned to do is give as unto the Lord. Huh? I got to get back to this. Give as unto the Lord. And any man, uh, any men, any women uh, that are doing something uh, contrary to the word of God, uh, God will deal with them. Uh, but don't you try to manipulate it and mess around and get yourself cursed. Let God handle them. Uh, let God put the curse on them. I don't care what they do with the money. I'm in good standing with the Lord. And then we will be able to see the blessings of the Lord uh, on your life regardless. Uh, guess what? If they mismanage the money, uh, church will go down uh, and your, your life will still be blessed. But don't let it be the other way around. Don't let your life go down in church. You got to learn how to be in partnership. You got to learn how to subscribe. And submit to God's request. Listen, saints, he just chose me to do it. He just chose me to say it. I ain't choose this. I had other things. I was, was going to be on a plane. <laughs> Flying around. <laughs> Playing and singing and producing records and getting my royalty checks. <laughs> and the Lord, thank you, the Lord said, no. I have assigned you to say it. Uh, even when it's difficult to say, <laughs> I am redirecting you to say it. And if you can't look past who he's assigned to say it, uh, you're going to mess around and miss God. You have, you're not able to recognize his voice. So what happens? Subscribe, submit to God's request. I'll preach for real next time. Let me just do this. Uh, what you got to learn to do if you're going to assist God in providing for you you got to learn how to satisfy your responsibility it's just getting a little bit redundant I went ahead of myself but you got to learn how to do your part you got to learn how to do what God asks you to do don't try to figure out God's part don't try to figure out how he's going to handle it. Just trust him and do your part. Good God Almighty. Uh, Y'all ever been there? When, and, and we do this in, the, in, in this word of faith community. Uh, uh, we name our seed. We name our seed. And there's nothing wrong uh, with naming our seed. Uh, but sometimes in doing that, we try to uh, manipulate or we try to figure out how God's going to work the blessing. How are we going to work it out? So if I give this, uh, if I do this, or if, if I do that, then perhaps God will uh, 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 cause that, that, that supervisor to see my application. Or perhaps God will cause uh, the people at the college to, to do this for me. We try to work out how God's going to do it. And sometimes we stress ourselves trying to do God work. You got to learn how to just satisfy your responsibility because it doesn't matter how spiritual you are. It doesn't matter how educated you are. It doesn't matter how connected you are. There are certain things that you are not qualified to do and figuring out how to reward a blessing is one of those things. You got to learn how to just be obedient and do what God told you. God tells Abraham uh, uh, to go to a place, go to the land of Moriah, uh, and there's a certain mountain, a certain place uh, that I'm going to tell you. Uh, look what happens in verse 3. So Abraham rose early in the morning. 
and saddled his donkey and took two of the young men with him and Isaac his son. He split the wood for the burnt offering and rose and went to the place which God told him. Good God Almighty, uh, 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 God tells him in verse 2, I want you to sacrifice uh, now your only son. Uh, in verse 3, uh, he gets up uh, and begins uh, to make movement uh, towards what God has told him to do. Uh, good God Almighty, uh, he gets up in faith. To do something uh, uh, that is difficult for him to do. Uh, he rises. I wish I had time with this. Uh, he rises uh, with anticipation. Good God Almighty. Uh, the Bible says, Deacon Hybrid, he rose up early in the morning uh, to get to uh, his father's business, uh, to tend to the assignment uh, that God uh, has put on his life. He gets up early in the morning. And what does he do? He travels. He goes uh, to the place uh, where God uh, told him to go. Uh, good God Almighty. Uh, and that's one thing that we got to understand. Uh, if we're going to assist God in providing for us, uh, we got to learn uh, how to be in the proper place. Uh, good God Almighty. Uh, you got positioning is everything. Uh, you must be uh, where your favor is assigned. I got news for you. It won't happen for you everywhere. But God's got a place of provision for you. Oh, good God Almighty. And you'll begin to see the favor of God, the reign of God in your life when you get in proper alignment uh, with where God has you. Uh, and for some people, this means different things. Uh, geographically, it, geographically, it might mean that you need to relocate. Uh, uh, it may be spiritually. Uh, you need to shift your spirit. Uh, it may be mentally. Uh, you need to shift your mindset. Uh, it may be religiously. Uh, you may need to shift your church house. Uh, but wherever it is uh, that God has aligned you, uh, he has assigned a blessing for you uh, in that place. Uh, good God, there's some witnesses here uh, that made some readjustments uh, and aligned themselves uh, to where you are now uh, and you have seen uh, the hand of God. Uh, you have seen uh, the favor of God uh, on your life. Uh, you've got to learn how uh, uh, to satisfy uh, your responsibility. Do the part that you can do uh, and let God have Handle his part. Uh, good God Almighty, if y'all say amen, uh, I feel the joy of the Lord. Uh, in just a minute here, uh, uh, listen, he also learns to honor God's request. Uh, good God Almighty, uh, we read on down. Uh, Abraham takes the wood. Let me paraphrase this uh, in the interest of time. He takes the wood. <laughs> uh, he takes all the things that's necessary for the sacrifice. Takes Isaac. They're going to the place and Abraham begins to build an altar. And then Isaac says, yo, dad, I see the altar. I see the wood. I see all this stuff. <laughs> you, you got it, man. You obeying God and everything. God bless you, dad. But pops, where is the sacrifice. <laughs> uh, 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 where is the sacrifice? Uh, uh, and he says there uh, in verse 8, Abraham said, my son, God will provide. <laughs> uh, if you keep reading, he says, my son, God will provide for himself. <laughs> Uh, a sacrifice for this moment. Uh, uh, have you ever been um, in a situation where you can see the handwriting on the wall and it didn't look like it was going uh, in your favor uh, and sometimes uh, you had to cry out, now Father, 
what is going on here? I've been coming to church, even if it's on Facebook. I've been coming to Bible study, even if it's on Zoom. I've been giving my tithe. I've been, I've been calling in the Sunday school. I've been treating everybody right. What is going on? It seems like nothing is getting better. And God says, my child, I will provide for myself what I am looking for. Have you ever felt like uh, you were about to be the sacrifice? Uh, like you were about to be offered up? Uh, like you were about to be killed uh, in the midst of what you're going through? Uh, I got news today. I got to cut this off. I'll preach better next time. I got news today. Uh, God says, uh, if you will move out of the way uh, and let me handle it. Uh, he says, I will provide uh, for myself. Uh, it calls for humility. Because uh, sometimes... Uh, we got to move ourselves out of the way and realize that God is not going to mess up his record on our account. He has never lied so far. So why would he use your situation to become a liar? He has never failed so far. So why would he use your situation to become a failure? Good God Almighty. He has never been a deadbeat dad so far. So why would he use your situation to be a deadbeat? Good God Almighty. Somebody ought to say to yourself, say, self myself saying hmm, God will provide. I wish somebody would give him praise right here and lift up your hand and say Lord I'm going to let you provide for me. I'm going to let you provide. If you handle if you handle your responsibility, if you subscribe and submit to the request of God, if you satisfy the human things that you can do, if you handle the natural things that you can do, then you will be satisfied by God's response. You'll be satisfied by how he responds to your responsibility. I wish I had a church that I was listening. Uh, he responds uh, to your responsibility. Uh, look what happens here. Uh, in verse 13 uh, says, then Abraham uh, lifted up his eyes uh, and looked Roll. What happened? What happened? He lifted up his eyes out and he looked. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What has he been doing all this other time? He's been looking at the altar. He's been looking at the sacrifice. He's been busy focusing on what he thought he needed to do. He was busy focusing and satisfying his responsibility. He was busy building uh, the altar. Uh, he was busy uh, doing what he needed to do. Uh, and then he needed uh, to do what? Uh, refocus. Uh, he needed uh, to look uh, in a different direction. Uh, I want to tell somebody uh, that's already built the altar. Uh, I want to tell somebody uh, that's already brought your willing sacrifice. Uh, I want to tell somebody uh, that's already done your part. Uh, look up. It's another season huh, coming in your life. Huh. It says Abraham huh, lifted his eyes huh, and looked. Huh, and when he began to refocus, huh, when he lifted his eyes, he, huh, and when he began to look, huh, the Lord showed him a ram <laughs> caught over in the thicket. Huh. I wish I had somebody huh, that's been focused huh, on trying to make your own way uh, to lift up your hands uh, and say, Lord, uh, I'm going to let you provide. Uh, I wish I had a church uh, that'll lift up your hands uh, and say, Lord, uh, I'm going to move uh, out of the way uh, and let you provide. Uh, in this season, uh, I got to refocus uh, and stop looking uh, on what I'm building. Uh, and stop looking uh, on what I have to offer uh, and look up uh, and realize uh, God's got a better plan. Uh, he's got a ram uh, caught in a thicket uh, just for you. Uh, I wish I had somebody uh, that has done all you can uh, to do the natural part. Uh, I got news for you. Uh, God's getting ready uh, 
to do the supernatural, uh, the things you can't do. Uh, he's going to put his super on your natural uh, and work this thing out uh, in your favor. Uh, I wish I had a church here uh, that will give him glory uh, because he's getting ready uh, to provide for you uh, in this season. Uh, of finance. You're getting ready to have an Abrahamic convention. You're getting ready to have an Abrahamic blessing. You're getting ready to have Abrahamic favor. Abraham and Abraham X. Can you wave your hand and tell him thank you. Thank you. Merit. God's getting ready to do it in such a way that you're going to have to name the place after God. I wish I had somebody here. God worked it out in such a way that Abraham, he didn't name the place blessing. He didn't name the place abundance. He didn't name the place overflow. He named the place Jehovah Jireh that God is my provider. I wish I had somebody in this room or in the cyber sanctuary that'll stand on your feet and name the place. Name the place. This place, 1478, I name it Jehovah Jireh. God will provide for Shady Grove. Number one, Primitive Baptist Church, the city of victory. God will provide. I wish I had a witness here that knows that he will provide because he has provided before. I wish I had a church here that I lift up his name. Somebody shout, Jireh. Jireh. Jireh is who he is. Providing is what he does. Do I have a witness here that I give God praise? Y'all excuse me. I'm excited about God's provision. Not just for me, but for you and your family. And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. You've been depressed because you've been basing it according to the stock market. You've been nervous because you've been basing it according to job employment. You've been nervous because you've been basing it according to your family members. You've been nervous because you've been basing it according to your friend's salary. But I want to tell somebody, you're looking too low. Look up. Refocus. He's about to bless you according to his riches in glory. What does that mean? have not seen and eats have not heard neither 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 has it entered in the heart of man what God is getting ready to do in your life I wish I had somebody that I do like this with me I see myself in the future and things look a whole lot better than they do right now. I see myself blessed. I see myself healed. I see myself as the head and not the tail. Above only, not beneath. The lender, not the borrower. I'm trying to stop y'all, but I feel the power of the Holy Ghost even right now. Lift up your hands and say, God, provide. However you see fit, provide. Use who you got to use. Provide. I hear the Lord say, I'm going to bring strangers into your life. The people you thought 
had the provision for you. God said, no, you've been trusting in them too long. I'm going to bring strangers into your life to bless you. I wish I had somebody that I believe it by faith. He said, I'm going to give you houses you didn't build. I'm going to give you harvests you didn't sow. I'm getting ready to do something that you haven't seen before. If you believe it, shout yes. Shout yes. Come on, church. If you believe it, move out of the way and let God provide. Y'all don't feel like sliding. Move out of the way. Let God provide. He already knows your business plan. He already sees your bank account. He already knows your credit score. He already knows your last name. He's already checked the background report. Good God Almighty. All he's waiting, all he's waiting for, all he's waiting for is you to move out of the way and let him provide a ram. Somebody said, Pastor, where did the ram come from? I wish I could tell you, but the text doesn't tell me where the ram came from. But in my spiritual imagination, I believe that as Abraham and Isaac was climbing one side of the mountain, the ram was climbing the other side of the mountain. And if you don't move, you'll never meet up with your blessing. Somebody, anybody, everybody, move. Move. Make a move. Make a move. God's getting ready to provide. Oh, 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 oh. I gotta be done with this. I gotta be done with this. But Lady E, it's first Sunday, and I start thinking about just when justice demanded that we should die for our sins. Good God Almighty, just when the major prophets didn't work, just when the minor prophets didn't work, the blood of bulls, just when the blood of lambs did not work, look at Jesus, look at God, sent a ram in the thicket, sent him down to 42 generations to walk oh, these dusty streets down here. Look at God sent Jesus from Judgment Hall to Judgment Hall. They marched him from court to court and found, found him guilty even though he didn't do anything. Look at Jesus hanging there on Calvary. They whipped him all night long. They whipped him. They whipped him with a cat of nine tails. They whipped him. They pierced him in the side from the sixth to the ninth hour. I hear Isaiah. I hear his prophecy. Said he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. But by his strife, by his strife, by his strife, I am healed. And I thank God for the healing. I'm so glad. 
when he died, they took him down, mother, and they laid him in a borrowed tomb. Come on, church. I'm almost done with this. I'm almost done with it. But he stayed there. He stayed, he stayed. He stayed, he stayed. He stayed there all night. Friday night. Stayed there all night. Saturday. Stayed there all night. Saturday night. Somebody that know the end of the story. Shout early. I can't hear you at home. Shout early, early Sunday morning. He got up. He got up with all power in his hand. What does this have to do with provision? Ladies and gentlemen, we would have been the sacrifice. We would have died in sin. We would have lifted our eyes in hell but God provided for himself let God let God I'm preaching hot, too hard for y'all let God I preach for myself let God cooperate with him Get in partnership with him. Let God. Let him provide. Let him provide. Let him provide. Somebody say, I don't know what to say, Pastor. Lift up your hands and say, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You gotta be. with him again you cannot insist that he provides for you but you can assist him in providing get that Abraham mindset where you submit with excitement and anticipation he could do that because he knew that God would not fail him came through too many times before to fail us in this situation. And I promise you I'm not looking for an emotional church, but I'm looking for a tapped in church that can hear prophetically what the Lord is saying. He's going to provide for you if you let him, let him Provide. Move out of the way. My Lord. Move your systems out of the way. Submit My to the Lord. system of God. And he will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. I want to give an opportunity for someone that doesn't know Jesus Christ to come. If you're out of the ark of safety, I extend an invitation for you, my brother, my sister. Doesn't matter what you've done, how long you've been doing it, how bad you think it is. If we would all tell our stories, our full testimonies, we've all been delivered from something that didn't look so good. God is not a respecter of person if he can do it for me these saints here. He can do it for you too. Doesn't matter how young you are or where you are. 
Tradition says you've got to be in the sanctuary and come down to the altar. We've seen that thrown out the window. There's beauty at the altar, don't get me wrong. But you can build an altar like Abraham in the tent, wherever you are, and come to Jesus. Won't you come now, my brother, my sister? Won't you come? Won't you come now? If you're in the cyber sanctuary, you can email us at connect at sg1church.org. And our team will get with you, lead you in the sinner's prayer, and welcome you into the kingdom of God. If you're here in the sanctuary, this altar is open. You can come now. You can come now. Perhaps you're already saved. But you're, you need a church home. You don't have a place to covenant discipleship. You don't have a place. You don't have a covering. I want to encourage you to be a part of this, the greatest church on this side of heaven. The Shady Grove number one Primitive Baptist Church. Uh, there is literally room for you. Won't you come and be a part of this family, the kingdom of God here at Shady Grove. Finally, if you just need prayer, point of contact. I'm going to ask Evangelist Rose she would come and just pray a prayer of faith for us as we close this moment. So if you need Christ or if you need church or you need a change, won't you come? Won't you come at this moment? to try you, whether to trust you, whether to believe this word that has been spoken on today. So God, we stand as intercessors, oh God, with that person who's preparing to lead their family to Christ. That person, oh God, who's looking for their ram in the thicket. Hallelujah. That person right now, oh God, who's done all that they've known to do, but it still seems as if they've not received an answer. God, we understand that you are a God of faith. You are a God of favor. And so, God, we ask you right now, oh God, to touch that heart, to touch that mind, to touch that home, and to touch that family. God, we're standing connected with them right now in the name of Jesus. No matter their location, hallelujah, God, no matter the past, no matter what they just did 30 minutes ago, God, you are a God who can save right now, oh God. So, God, we ask you right now, oh God, to go into the home, oh God, into the hospital, oh God, the nursing home. Oh God, somebody may be even clocked in at work right now, oh God, and they cannot express verbally that they yield, they yield, oh God. But you understand the heart, oh God. So open up a way right now in the name of Jesus, God, for them to express, to kneel down and to bow down unto you, oh God, to trust you, Lord God, as the one and only way maker, the one and only miracle worker, the one and only redeemer, the one and only sustainer, the one and only healer, the one and only provider. God, we thank you right now, oh God, that you are a multifaceted God. You're not just a one-dimensional God, but God, you can move, oh God, right now in the name of Jesus in the United States, in China, in Russia, all over Europe, from Chicago to Los Angeles. God, you can move right now, oh God. So we ask you right now, oh God, to move right now, oh God, so that they can feel your presence. No longer afraid, no longer discouraged, no longer worried about the sins of yesterday, but yielding to you right now, oh God. Not looking for themselves to become right, but knowing that they can only become righteous through you, oh God. Through the very blood of Jesus. Through saying that they believe and confess with their mouth and believing in their heart that Jesus Christ is Lord. 
So God, we thank you for choosing this sanctuary as a vessel, hallelujah, as a mouthpiece, oh God, to get your word to your people, God. So we ask you right now, oh God, that they will step out in faith and on faith, uh, hallelujah, trusting you, oh God, even though they may not understand, for you are not a God to be understood with our physical minds, but you are a God, hallelujah, to be trusted with our hearts, oh God. We understand that the steps of a good man are ordered by you, God, so order the steps to you right now, oh God. Father God, we bless you. We thank you. We're excited for new birth. Somebody's giving birth. Somebody, hallelujah, is in labor right now, Lord God. So we thank you right now that the birth canal has been opened. We thank you right now, oh God, that the push is happening, God. We thank you right now, oh God, for breathing fresh breath in life and to these your people it's in the name of jesus that we do pray thank god bless and amen amen come on somebody put a praise on it hallelujah bless the lord just two more acts of worship today and then we will be done this worship experience. Let's worship now by way of giving. If you have those offerings ready, we're suggesting that you give electronically. If you need to give traditionally, there is a receptacle in the foyer that you're able to deposit that offering in. Uh, ushers are not serving in that way. Uh, so we're asking that you would give Electronically, but again, if you need to give traditionally, then you can put it in the box in the foyer on your way out. Amen, amen, amen. Blessings upon you now. As we get those offerings together, we're getting ready for our offering affirmation. today's offering, we're, we're believing, believing God for jobs and better jobs, jobs raises and bonuses, bonuses benefits, benefits, sales and, and commissions, settlements, estates and inheritances, and interest and income, rebates and returns, houses and automobiles, scholarships and fellowships, seed for the sower, checks in the mail, direct deposits, Gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off, debts decreased or canceled, royalties received. We don't just give money, we give money with a mission, money with a mark, money with a purpose, money with a destiny, money with an assignment, money with a vision. We are 2 Corinthians 9 and 8 believers. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. This offering is blessed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah! It's offering time. Hallelujah. Let's give all over the city of victory. Come on. Put it out there one time, y'all. This week, Come on, I can't tell you. Will be, 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 will
thousand years ago, Heavenly Father, when you hung down that cross on Calvary, Heavenly Father, and we realized, Heavenly Father, that you died, Heavenly Father, but the good news today, Heavenly Father, we know that you rose on the third day with all power in your hand, Heavenly Father, and we continue to call upon your name, Heavenly Father, and Heavenly Father, we say thank you, Heavenly Father, we, we glorify your name, we lift you up, Heavenly Father, it's nobody like you, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, even when we down, Heavenly Father, you lift us up, Heavenly Father. When we are in total order, Heavenly Father, you clean us up, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we just say thank you, Heavenly Father. We can't thank you enough, Heavenly Father. We realize, Heavenly Father, you went through so much that day, Heavenly Father, to, to save us, Heavenly Father. We once were lost, Heavenly Father, but Heavenly Father, we found you, Heavenly Father. You knew where we was all the time, Heavenly Father. And we say thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for being consistent, Heavenly Father. Thank you for not giving up on us, Heavenly Father. You have right now with us, Heavenly Father. 
And we keep calling your name today, Elder Bob. Because you be in our eyes, Elder Bob. You the same God, Elder Bob. Same God, Elder Bob. What you did back then, Elder Bob. We know you're doing it again. Somebody shout, he's the same God. said this is the blood of the new covenant shed Hallelujah. for remission my, my, of sin. Same blood. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Same blood that Thank saves. God. Same blood that heals. Same blood that delivers. You, this blood will never lose its power. Yeah. Drink ye all of it. It's as often as you Thank eat you. this bread and drink of this cup, show forth my remembrance until I come again. He said, we're not going to do this until we do it together. Over yonder. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I can't wait for that day. Hallelujah. He's the same God. Watch out, D. <laughs> same God. Same God. Same God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the Primitive Baptist Church, we go another step in the right of washing the saints' feet. We have not been able to do that in this pandemic climate, but we have certainly embraced the essence of what that's all about as humbling ourselves and serving one another. I want you to look for opportunities this week to serve your friends, serve your family, even serve those you may not know. And in doing so, you are uh, doing, you are uh, activating on what Jesus was trying to teach them in the right of washing the saints' feet. Amen. God bless you today. I hope that you have been blessed by this worship experience today, that you are able to take something with you as you go this week. Remember to let God provide for yes. you. Oh, yes. Assist him. Don't insist, uh -huh. but assist all right. All right. God in providing for you. We're standing on our feet all over mm -hmm. this house. God bless you. God bless you to everyone. Thank you to these faithful ministers. Thank you so much. We appreciate you all and all you do. Uh, to our administrators, our deacons, our mothers, to every one of you, we honor you. We want to pause for a moment just before we go and say happy birthday to our church mother, the chair lady of our mother's board, Mother Cornelia Robinson. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Mother Robinson. Happy birthday to you. Oh, yeah. Amen. Many more. All that. All that. God bless you. We love y'all. Thank y'all for being in the sanctuary today. I got to tell you, we're going. We we way over. We'll do better next week. But I got to tell y'all, this feels uh, uh, this feels good to have saints in here. We've been preaching to the wall, brother Henry. We've been preaching to the wall and preaching to pews. And I talk about it to the preachers back in the days to say, Amen, light. Amen, walls. Well, it came to pass. There's power in what we say. We were saying amen to the lights and walls for real. And God bless you to these preachers that have endured this season with us. They ain't just been me. That's a different kind of preaching, ain't it? Preaching 
preaching uh, 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 to empty churches. So it's so good to have, for those that are not here, that are tuning in, our family and friends, we have 30 people, uh, slots, and 30 slots for people to come and worship with us in this phase one uh, of our reopening. And we're just so glad to have saints in the sanctuary that I don't know what to do with myself. God bless y'all. I'm not going to go out and shake your hands. God bless you. I'm just waving. I love everybody. Blessings to you all in the cyber sanctuary as well. Let's get ready uh, for Bible study on Wednesday night as we move further in this finance uh, series. And then we'll meet again for worship on next Sunday. Everybody on the road to recovery list, we are praying for you and believing that God is going to work in your favor in the coming days. All right? Blessings on you. With uplifted hands, receive the blessing of the Lord. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord, bless May the Lord you. keep you. May the Lord, the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May the Lord be gracious to you. And give you peace. And give you peace. For this is, For this is the, will of God. the will of God. Amen in the heavens. Amen in the heavens. Amen in the heavens. Amen in the earth. Amen in the earth. Until next time, God maintain victory. God bless you. We love you. The ushers will dismiss you. God bless you.